In set 4.5, they added a new mechanic called the Lucky Lantern. It adds another layer to the game and it can open up more opportunities depending on what you get from it. The Lucky Lantern has a 75% chance of spawning in any game, so you won't get it every time, but if it does spawn, it will happen on the round after the carousel in stage 2, 3, or 4. Every player gets the same stuff from the lanterns, and they may include gold, item components, nikos, spatulas, force of natures, and it always contains one or two of the four new consumable items. So in this video, I'll be going over how to utilize these so you can dominate your lobbies. The loaded dice allows you to reroll your shop once for free. However, the champion you use this on will limit the synergies that you can find in the shop. The shop is also limited by its standard rules. If you're level 4, you can only see 1, 2, and 3 cost units. So let's take an example. If you're level 4 and you use the loaded dice on a Nasus, Nasus is a Divine and Siphoner, so you can only get units that has these synergies in your shop. In this case, you can only find Nasus, Wukong, Vladimir, Jax, and Irelia. First, the shop rolls the synergies for each box. If it rolls Siphoner, only Nasus and Vlad can appear in that box. And if it rolls Divine, Nasus, Wukong, Jax, and Irelia can appear. And it repeats this process for each of the five boxes. After that, the shop rolls like normal with percentages. So if you roll a Siphoner in a box, you have a 65% chance of hitting a Nasus and a 35% chance of hitting Vlad. And if it rolls Divine, you have a 27% chance of hitting Nasus. So on average, you can expect to hit roughly two Nasuses in a loaded dice shop at 4, as opposed to the normal shop where the average is 0.7 Nasuses in every shop. This just covers the odds for one champion, so if you want to learn more about the odds for every unit, I will link an article and reddit post in the description that go over every single unit. So now that you know how it works, when should you use the loaded dice? There are three different scenarios where this is optimal. The first one is when you have direction for a comp and you're committed to playing it. In that case, you can use this as early as possible once you have committed. The second scenario is if you're sitting on a couple of pairs during the early or mid game, and you want to get stronger to either win streak or to stabilize. The third scenario is if you're playing a reroll comp and you use this on a unit to get as many of that unit as possible to hit your 3 star earlier. The Reforger rerolls the items on a champion and puts them on your bench. This works with item components, full items, and Orn items. If you reroll an item component, it will give you a random item component. If you reroll a full item, you will get a random full item. The components on the initial item has no impact on what you get. If you reroll an Orn item, you will get a different Orn item. The best usage of this is to reroll Orn items if you got one of the weaker ones, or if the one you got doesn't fit well with your current comp. Another great usage of this is if you have one of those games where the game gives you nothing but cloaks and belts. Then you can reroll one of those into a more usable component. The third usage of this is if you have gotten all of your components and you have three left. Say you're playing Kale and you want to make a third item for her. You have Sword, Rod, and Glove. You're fine with making Jewel Gauntlet, but you prefer Deathcap or Rageblade. So what you do here is you reroll the sword in hopes of getting a bow or another rod. If you hit, nice. If you don't, you just make Jewel Gauntlet and hope you get lucky next time. The Magnetic Remover unequips all items and components from a champion and puts them on your bench. This does open up some different strategies that you can use. First one is that you can put non-ideal items on your carry. Say you have already made Deathblade and Hurricane on Trindomir, but you're still waiting on the glove to make QSS as his third item. In that case, you can slam a Sojin or a Bramble Vest on him, as you can just remove it later once you get the QSS. This makes your carry stronger while you're still waiting for the third item, instead of just utilizing two on him. Another usage of this is that you don't have to remake champions you need for the late game. Nasus is a champion that is run in both Kale and Talon comps to get two Siphoner in. But say you are in the early game and Nasus is your primary tank and you can make a Bramble Vest on him. Instead of having to worry about remaking Nasus later when you make Bramble on him, now you can just stack him and use him as an early or mid game carry. 
Once you get a 2 star Shen for example, you can just remove the items from Nasus and place them on Shen. A third usage is to save it for a stage 5 or 6 carousel. You want to do this if you have 3 decent items on your carry. Then if a really strong item shows up on one of those carousels, you can remove the 3 items and remake it into a stronger combination. Or say if you have QSS as a defensive item, but now all the heavy CC comp players are dead, you can remove it and go into a triple offensive build or put a GA on it to counter assassins or trap claw on it to counter spellcasters. The fourth thing you can do is to play a reroll comp that power spikes in stage 3 and 4 but falls off towards stage 5 and 6. What you can do then is to transfer the items from a 3 star 1 cost over to a 2 star legendary. This way you get to keep your 3 star and you also get a stronger main carry. You can do this with Tristana to Samira, Brand or TF to Set or Yone, or Nasus to Swain. The target dummy works just like an Azir soldier. You place it on a champion and it spawns. You can't sell it or put items on it, so this is just more frontline. You always want to use this as soon as you get it, unless you're trying to force a lost streak and you think you might get too strong if you use it. But this is a very niche scenario and I personally haven't been in that one myself yet. The dummy itself scales with each stage. It's a 1 star on stage 2, 2 star on stage 4, 3 star on stage 6, and 4 star on stage 8. This is the least impactful consumable in my opinion, but it does make comps that lack frontline stronger and it makes comps that have a lot of frontline become weaker. This also allows you to stabilize a bit sooner. In this example, I got two target dummies from the lantern and three of my frontline units were one starred. So if I didn't have them, I would have to roll for at least one or two of them in order to be stable. Besides that, they can also be used to outplay through positioning. Place them in the back corners to get pulled by Aatrox or place them in the middle back so assassins have to waste time attacking them before going to your carry. Now that you know how to utilize the consumables, let's talk about the other stuff you get, which is gold, item components, Nikos, spatulas, and force of natures. If you get extra gold, this is often going to be used to econ so you can hit level 7 or 8 sooner, and or have a bigger roll down once you hit those levels. Keep in mind that every player gets the same stuff, so they too will be getting bigger roll downs, so you might have to get a bit stronger than usual before you stop rolling. If ecoing is something you're not familiar with, check out my economy guide where I go in depth on the subject, link in the description. If you get item components, remember the general rule of making an item if you have 4 or more components. Sitting on a bunch of item components is generally not worth it as they're just wasted power on your bench. In addition, your future transitions will be faster as you are not spending a bunch of time thinking about which items you are making. And if you're new to itemization as well, Go check out my guide where I go in depth on every single item. This is also linked in the description. If you get Nikos, there are a lot of different ways of utilizing these. The most common way to use this is once you've done a big roll down, you usually Nico off a pair like Sejuani or another carry to make them 2 star. This way you don't have to donkey roll and you can save up money to either push level 9 or to do another roll down a bit later if you're still missing units. Another use of Nikos is to Nico 3 cost pairs in the early and mid game. A 2 star 3 cost is not common at this stage, so if you have one, you're going to be a lot stronger compared to most people. In general, just don't be greedy with them. Their main usage is to make your board stronger so you can econ better or win streak harder. If you get spatulas, your plan will be dependent on which comp you're going into. Nothing will change right away in most cases. And if you get a force of nature, you are more inclined to play value comps that want to fit a bunch of 4 and 5 cost units in, like the Kale comp. Or if you get this early on 2-5, playing a reroll comp is a lot stronger as you get an extra unit in while you're slow rolling in the mid game. Thank you so much for watching, if you learned something, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Comment down below what video you want me to make next, because there is a high chance I will be making a video that gets requested. And if you want to get better at TFT, join the Discord, we got over 1000 other players there who are hungry to climb. And if you want to get coached by me, the information is over on the Discord server as well. So take care, and see you in the next video.